I didn't know about that, so I was, I was liberated from the fear of that. Um, it's only f comparatively recently that Guy shared sure. that with me. Um, no, I mean, I came on, first of all, it was very important to me that it was an Israeli director. Mm -hmm. I felt that to have that visceral, intimate knowledge was, was, was very important in the director. Um, and then, of course, for me, just as a greedy, selfish, egotistical actress, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was a great role, you know, um, and we want great roles. Um, I knew it would be an incredible challenge, and I knew it was a dangerous challenge because if you take on board that sort of transformation, luck, and thanks to Karen who helped that happen, um, you know, it's it's a it's a tightrope. That particular, um, you know, type of work is a tightrope. You can fall off it very very easily. Um, but um, I've you know I've historically had um, not a deep, pr profound understanding of Israel, but I've, I've always felt a connection with Israel. Um, I played a um, member of Mossad in, in another film called The Dead that was based on a wonderful Israeli film. Um, and I don't know, I've always had a sort of instinctive feeling about, um, about Israel. So, um, you know, many, many different elements came together for me. In terms of the way Guy described the film, it's, it's such a psychological portrait in a lot of ways of, of Golda. What was your knowledge of her going into the film and, and what did you learn about her and what did you want to lean into in terms of the intricacies of her, of her personality? I didn't know, I mean, I remember her being elected and, and I remember that was a very important moment for me personally because it was the first time in my experience I'd known of a female mm -hmm. leading a country. And that was a huge thing. That was massive. You can't imagine how big that was um, for, for, for a young woman. It, it trans, really transformed one's understanding of what the world could be. Um, so, you know, that, that was an important moment. Now, you know, now I'm looking at her in a different way. I, you know, I'm, now I'm having to play her. So, um, all the normal things of, you know, reading books, reading her autobiography, reading her son's book, um, uh, watching tape, watching film, thank, thank you, YouTube, you're such an incredibly valuable <laughs> resource for us actors. Um, so, you know, all of that, I, I just sort of gently led my way in. But honestly, I think the most powerful thing for me was actually what Karen's department did for me. Um, Guy and I had many discussions before, didn't we? You know, even can we do it without makeup? You know, but Guy was very strong in his feeling that I really needed to have a physical transform, uh, transformation, and he was absolutely right about that. Um, and it was that physical transformation that, that, uh, that, that pulled me into her, into her inner being. It's funny, the outward appearance pulled me into the inner story in a way that I, to this day, I don't quite understand. Mm. But it was incredibly important. And, you know, you'll, we'll tell the story of how we got to that point, <laughs> yeah. It, it is an astounding. It just absolutely became me. You know, we went through a process, didn't we? Do you remember in my kitchen? Yes. With Guy. And, you know, all of, we had the incredibly short space of time to achieve it in. How, six how weeks, six weeks from start. I mean, meeting Guy, and I think her first shoot day. Yes. It was true, because when I spoke to Guy and met Guy, he said, we're going for four prosthetics. I thought, six weeks? Okay, <laughs> we'll give it our best shot. <laughs> but it was you, Guy, actually, that really pushed that and encouraged that, and definitely it was the right thing in the end. But always we had our mind on making it as easy for Helen to wear, as natural as possible, despite the fact it looks like a massive big makeup. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think we've got about five or six pieces on, small pieces. 
um, we did sort of the minimal we could for maximum effect, I would say. Mm. And the wig, eyebrows, contact lenses, you know, a lot went into it. It's so precise. Enough, I found great, great similarity in her and Elizabeth I, mm. who I'd also played and researched. And the quality that they both had was this utter, utter dedication to their country. That above everything. Um, in the case of Elizabeth I, obviously it was a country that was already had a long history and, and had been, in, in Golda's case, she was truly one of the creators, one of the people responsible for the existence of Israel. Um, you know, she was there before it became the state of Israel. She was there throughout the whole early, early creation of Israel. So that utter, utter dedication to the, probably the exclusion of her family to a certain extent, certainly her husband sort of went by the wayside uh, because that was, I mean, later on, she said, I was at my happiest. And I'm, I think this was true. She was at her happiest looking after the chickens in the kibbutz. And she would have liked a simpler life. But she understood that this was what she had to do. And having taken that step, and not unlike Elizabeth II, incidentally, mm. um, having taken that step, her commitment was absolute was uncompromising and total. The film depicts the experience of war in a very, uh, the possibility of it, the, the pain of it, uh, in a way that is 